Arthur Dent's house is to be demolished for a bypass. He notes the bulldozer outside his window and runs outside to lie down in front of the machine. One of Arthur's closest friends is Ford Prefect, who is, in fact, not human. He's been annoyed to be stuck on Earth for 15 years as he wishes to continue his research for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ford arrives and drags Arthur to a bar. At the bar, he says he is from another planet and the world is about to end. Suddenly, Ford asks Arthur if he has a towel, and Arthur confusedly replies he does not. Why a towel? The guide extols the merits of towels due to their multiple uses. If you have a towel on you, you're assumed to have everything else you need too. Ford wishes of all the races who could come to Earth it didn't have to be the Vogans, but he knows what to do, besides, he has his towel. Zaphod Beeblebrox, president of the Imperial Galactic Government, steals the Heart of Gold, at the unveiling ceremony and flies off with it, accompanied by Trillian. Inside Vogon Jeltz's flagship are Ford Prefect and Arthur Dent, which is rather unfortunate since the Vogans hate hitchhikers. Jeltz announces that he will throw him off the ship. The hatchway opens and the two are popped out into space. 29 seconds after they are dropped into space, Arthur and Ford are rescued as a hole appears in the galaxy. Ford and Arthur find themselves in the embarkation area of the Heart of Gold. The men meet Marvin, who tells them that he is a genius but has been given the mundane task of moving them to the bridge. When Arthur enters he is shocked by Zaphod's two heads. Ford and Zaphod exchange wary and familiar greetings. Ford tells Arthur that Zaphod is his semi-cousin, and tells Zaphod that Arthur is a friend whom he saved when his planet blew up. That evening Trillian thinks about her surprisingly negative reaction to her planet being destroyed. Her two white mice she brought sit in a cage next to her. In the night Trillian, Zaphod and Ford meet at the control room. Trillian is pointing out how there is a planet at the exact set of coordinates Zaphod predicted. Zaphod gasps that he's found it, the most improbable planet that ever existed. Ford and Zaphod are arguing when Arthur joins them. Ford is very skeptical about McGrathia and claims it never existed. The narrator of the story cuts in and explains that yes, this really is McGrathia. Also, it is about to launch a deadly missile attack as part of an automatic defense system. That will only bring about a few broken coffee cups, a mouse cage, a bruise to someone's upper arm, and the creation and demise of a sperm whale. The heart of gold lands on the planet. Five figures wander across the dull, bleak, and freezing planet. The group approaches what seems to be a massive crater, and, to their disgust, they see clumps of whale meat everywhere. Zaphod happily points out the silver lining to this that the whale's fall opened up the interior and there is an underground passage. The others apprehensively follow Zaphod down. The interior of the planet that they are in is a network of galleries and passages. Zaphod explains that the McGrathians largely lived underground. He tells Arthur to stay with Marvin and guard the entrance for safety. Ford figures out that he must have stolen the Heart of Gold for this purpose, and all Zaphod will say is that he stole the ship for many reasons but he doesn't quite know what he's looking for. After he says this, gas begins to fill the chamber and they all pass out. Meanwhile Arthur is annoyed and says he is going for a walk alone. The atmosphere is thin and there is no moon, so it is very dark. Arthur doesn't see the old man until he runs into him. The man smiles and explains that the people on the planet aren't dead but merely asleep because of the economic recession. He mentions wistfully that they used to do fascinating and wonderful work but then the recession hit and they decided to sleep through it and have the computers revive them when it was over. When Arthur asks where they are going, the man tells him matter-of-factly that the population is awakening. Arthur shivers and sits beside the man in the small craft.
The narrator explains that things aren't always as they seem, for man always thought he was smarter than dolphins. In fact, they knew about the imminent destruction of Earth and tried to warn man, to no avail. They left Earth by their own means before the Vogans came. Their last message was, so long, and thanks for all the fish. The only creature smarter than dolphins are white mice, though man would never guess that. The old man says nothing as the air car moves through the darkness. It plunges into a tunnel, and eventually, Arthur can see a large circle of volatile light. Arthur is speechless and asks if they are back in the business of making planets. The old man exclaims of course not, but they have one client left with an extraordinary commission. Arthur stares at the man's pointed finger. It takes a moment for him to realize what he is looking at, and the man confirms its earth mark too. He adds that the mice were particularly upset, as they paid for it. He explains further that mice commissioned, paid for, and ran the planet Earth. In fact, they were experimenting on men. He explains how the original Earth came to be. A computer, Deep Thought, was asked for the answer, that is, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. The computer came up with the answer being 42. The programmers were stunned and then began to ask what the question was. Deep Thought continued, though, and said that someday he would design a new computer, a computer powerful enough to find the question to the ultimate answer. Deep Thought again paused for effect, and said the computer will be called Earth. Ford and Trillian try to wake up Zaphod, who with his two windpipes got a double dose of the gas. The ground is hard and cold, and as Zaphod revives he sees that it is gold. Gold that is sleek and smooth and endless in every direction. They're in a planet catalog. The last images of the planet catalog fade away and suddenly they are sitting in a waiting room. A man announces that the mice will see them now. Slarty Bartfast sighs to Arthur that the Vogans destroyed 10 million years of work and planning in an instant. He is also working on the new Earth and has been assigned Africa shorelines. A little light flashes and Slarty Bartfast tells him to come along, for he is going to meet the mice. Arthur enters the waiting room and his friends greet him excitedly. They are stuffing their faces with food. A tiny voice welcomes the Earth Man and Arthur shouts in surprise that there are mice on the table. Trillian introduces Benji Mouse and Frankie Mouse, their hosts and the mice she brought from Earth. The mice are excited to meet Arthur and offer to buy his brain. It will have to be extracted, of course, but they can put in a replacement electronic brain. The mice in their little glass transports fling themselves aggressively toward Arthur. Things do not look good, but suddenly every alarm on the planet sounds. The alarms warn of a hostile ship on the planet. Arthur, Ford, Trillian, and Zaphod rush up and down corridors looking for a way out, when they find Slarty Bartfast's aircar, which is waiting for them with a note pinned to the instrument panel telling them which is probably the best button to push. The aircar flies through the corridors up out into the open air of the planet and to the Heart of Gold. The Heart of Gold zooms away. Zaphod says they will head toward the restaurant at the end of the universe, since they're hungry.